Hey guys, welcome back and it cannot be another week of after and fight night and another interview about fight night and nay this time and it's winner because it's fight night and nay seasonal smackdown and this time we have uh, with here with us floppy matkif how are you doing my friend doing good uh how do you feel after winning the seasonal smackdown on fight night and nay um yeah, feels really good to like get a win going into seasonals. Um, like I've been having a lot of trouble like finding out like what decks I want to bring and whatnot, but like definitely like helps the confidence. Like at least I'm playing well. Awesome. Is this giving you a boost of confidence going into the seasonal in the following days? Yeah. All right, but. You are kind of new here, at least to the audience. So could you tell a little, uh, tell us a little bit more about yourself? Like, for example, what's your background with the card games before arriving to LR? Yeah, so I actually didn't play any card game like too seriously before LOR. Um, like, I played a bit of like Pokemon and Magic casually, but I never got into it very competitively. I was always interested, but um, because those games are so expensive to get into, I never was able to. Um, and then, Room Terror, like, I saw that was coming out, and its free-to-play model made it, like, really easy to get into. And, yeah, I've just stayed with it ever since. It's really fun. Hmm. And how did you actually come to play LR? What, what was the main reason for coming to play LR? Um, I, there was a YouTuber I watched that played it, um, I primarily watched him for League of Legends content, but he was trying the game out and thought it looked cool, it was doing one of the, um, like, pre-beta, like, things, um, and then I tried it out then. Oh, nice. And what made you stick with it? Like, what, what do you love at LR that keeps you playing? <laughs> um... I don't know, it's just fun. Don't really have anything else to do with my time. I mean, fair enough. If you if you ju can just have fun and win tournaments, it works. Speaking of tournaments, Fight Night and A Seasonal Smackdown, let's get right into your lineup. And the first deck, it's an old god of LR already. From the past meta, it's Azir Aurelia. So why are we trying to bring this one back or why is it still working? <laughs> uh, yeah, pretty much it's still the best deck. Um, like, nothing's really changed, there's just other good decks now, but I think this one, I'm actually surprised, like, how underplayed it is, because I feel like it has to be the best deck, but ladder play rates won't, like, suggest that, so that's kind of weird, but yeah, I think the deck's just really good. Is it a comfort pick of yours, since you say that it's so good? Uh, yeah, I'm probably a bit biased towards it, um, but I do think it's actually stronger than, like, Akshan, Sivir variant and whatnot. Mm, why do you think it's stronger than that? What are the main reasons? Um, it's a lot more consistent, um, you really just need to draw, like, your dice or Azir and you're good to go, whereas, like, you need to draw like multiple pieces and things to line up right for Sivir to work out properly. Um, and I just think its game plan is like doing stronger things. It's a lot less like disruptable and easy to interact with. Yeah, makes sense. And we do have some new cards in the deck now that it got a little bit tuned down with the with the fixes, with the patches, but we got Treasure Seeker, we got Defiant Dance, and how do they work with the deck now that they are included in it? Yeah, so like, Defiant Dance is like, the best card in the deck now. <laughs> um, it's really good, like, means the opponent basically can't play units that cost like, five or more because you just bounce it and get this huge tempo swing. Um, so a very powerful tool that like makes cards like Screeching Dragon that used to just like be able to hit the board and like sit around and keep like blocking forever. Like you just bounce it and like don't have to worry about it. Like you're happy when they play Screeching Dragon now. 
And Treasure Seeker is just in here because it's a broken card and you play broken cards. <laughs> yeah, Treasure Seeker has been playing in a lot of the Shurima decks. But Defiant Dance, some of our, our, uh, our other interviews said that some people do not realize that Defiant Dance can be used on your own units too. So did you ever get the chance to define dance your own units and win a game? <laughs> um, I haven't yet. I've seen it come up for my opponents where like they missed that that's a potential line, but I haven't had a spot myself where it was proper to do that. Well, we hope that one day you'll get that chance and. Some people, I think, are experimenting with Will. Some people are still playing Homecoming. So, what's your reasoning for playing home, still playing Homecoming in the deck? Um, homecoming compared to Will, it's just more. Um, it like serves as a protection spell and a bounce spell, so it's very flexible in that regard. Um, and. So it's very useful for like bouncing a blade dance uh, or like protecting a view or also like having that same function as like just like getting rid of an expensive unit and if you do just like need to be able to bounce something without being interrupted you can always use it on your landmark. Alright and I see an addition that I think people were experimenting with, they weren't sure if it's good or not, Field Musicians. What's the purpose of the card in the deck? Is it a one-off just to throw off your opponent, make make them think about it, or what's the purpose of the actual card? Um, it's just as an extra card to help against slow matchups. The deck's already very good at punishing slower strategies, but you can lose if you don't draw into your dice with you. So, um, or if you just like don't draw enough of what you need, right? You need to. Like, you can draw those and not have any blade dance or whatever. So, it just makes sure, like, those winning matchups, like, become unlosable, pretty much. Yeah, makes sense. And let's compare the power level, for example, with the top dogs of the other Ionia Shurima decks. What does Azir Aurelia have on top of those? Why, why can you, why would you choose this over other uh, Shurima Ionia piles? <laughs> Um, yeah, so its matchup tables are, like, pretty unique, um, like, it's a lot more, like, polarized than the Sivu deck, um, you're very strong against some things, but very weak against other things, um, so if you're expecting, like, certain things that it's very strong against, it's obviously going to be better, um, and then there are some, like, matchups where they, like, very, like, as we would Raven, like, gonna beat this, but lose to the civil decks um and like anivia this is gonna destroy that but it like has game against like the civil decks so i think both are like very viable as tournament brings but you should be aware of the matchup spreads of both of them to make sure which one's best for your lineup speaking of which speaking of the matchup spreads what what did you want to face when you picked azira Rele and what would you struggle with let's begin with what did you act to actually face yeah so i wanted to just face like slow things that couldn't deal with the aggression so like um the actually the main thing i was trying to beat with my lineup going in with gp sejuani i didn't end up seeing very much of it but also stuff like deep and other like slow strategies or like things that just can't be off aggression. Alright, and did you get to actually face any of them or did you face something that put you in a little bit of trouble with the deck? Um I the first round of Fight Night I lost to uh Leona Zoe, I think it was, with this deck. Um it had a bit of a weird hand and they had like the perfect curve into a morning light and I ended up losing that game. Um, but I won every game after that, um, just kept hitting like good matchups and drawing my cards. Impressive. So now we spoke about the kind of the decks that you want to face. Which decks do you really not want to face face your Aurelia? Um, any sort of like super fast aggro with burn um is a tough matchup 
And it's really just that, honestly. Like, scorched earth decks can be, like, kind of annoying. Like, I don't really want to face Ezreal Draven, but outside of that, I'm pretty happy going to anything else. Mm. Have you, speaking of scorched earth, the TF Swain is on the rise, so do you expect it to put you in a little bit of trouble in the seasonal? Because it's seeing a resurrection. Yeah, um, it's a good deck. I've tried it out myself. It's solid. Um, it's not quite as strong as as we will Draven into this deck. Um, like you don't have the Draven level up progression and a lot less burn. Um, it's probably still like favorite into this technically, but I think with good play, like it's not gonna be a problem. Definitely, and a good player. Definitely, you are moving forward to. The next deck, Pirate Agro, something we do not really see brought to the table in the in terms of agro decks. Most of the people choose to go for discard agro. Most of the people choose to go for the new sensation Lulu Z, for example. So why why are we bringing Pirate Agro? What's what's unique about it? Um, it's the only agro deck that's favored into GP Sejuani. Um, well, also not being bad. Um, because, like, the lineup, of course, trying to beat, like, GP Sejuani and so and stuff, and this was the Igo deck to bring to do that. And why is it so favored? Why, why do you feel like it's so favored into GP Sejuani? What does it bring to the table? Um, it, pretty much just the burn, like, GP Sejuani, like, you're gonna be able to close the game fast enough, like, they need to level up your champions and swing with those to win usually um and you can just like get some damage in in the early game and just start burning them out and they really can't do anything about it and the list is pretty standard right yeah. you cannot play too much with the ratios but i still see some room of innovation because i still see that one of our needs sentry what's it doing there um so in testing i was playing a warp, but then I realized that code is 5 mana Mystic Shot and isn't really good. So um, I like Arachnoid Sentry just like for the middle game turns, like help you push damage like turn 4 or 5. Like you can play like a 1 drop and this in the same turn and like make a big swing to a lot of damage. And it's like the perfect timing because that's when you're trying to get your last damage push before transitioning into burn, and I really like it as a one of. Did you actually manage to draw it and did it save you in any situation or help you to actually push some more damage or is it just a one of that your opponent might not want to play into? Yeah, there was one game actually, I think it was against Deep, where if I had any other code, I would have lost that game, but Arachnoid Sentry like perfectly like was able to push damage in that turn and get them in range of burn. So, sounds cool. It's still doing the bits, it seems. Even in this deck, even in some TF variants with TF Gangplank. Uh, I need to ask you, what did you actually want to face with this deck as well? And what did you not want to face with this as well? Yeah, so this deck, like... Um, still want to be facing like GP Sejuani kind of stuff. Um, and just like any deck without healing that like can't reasonably end the game like is gonna be super good for you um like really any deck that's like not trying to end the game fast like even like anivia stuff is like pretty slow even though it has healing like you can just like play a slow game and burn them out um i don't want to see like as we will coma like it has healing and it's gonna end the game on turn 10 no matter what um as well as like mid range stuff like Shen Joven can just like stabilize and then win off of his board. Mm, a discussion that I love to bring up as an aggro player is what's what's our matchup into Lee Sin? Because now obviously Lee Sin is lo is playing six eyes quote unquote, so they get healing more consistently, they get champ blockers more consistently. Does this deck still have legs against it, or is it more of a struggle? Um, I think it's playable in the least, and you have to play kind of weird. You like you need misfortune, right? Misfortune's going to carry you in that matchup. Um, 
if you find with fortune, then you have a game, but I think if you don't go on with fortune, you're just done for. Is Eye of the Dragon that powerful that you cannot win without misfortune? Yeah, pretty much. Hmm. Well, it's good to know because traditionally this deck used to be favored, but you also mentioned Ezreal Karma that you do not want to see. And I know also traditionally that aggro and decks that can go wide are good into Ezreal Karma, so why do you not feel that safe going into Ezreal Karma with this? Um, pretty much like Ezreal Karma can like, it's playing like Tasty Faith Folk and Eye of the Dragon, and like Tasty Faith Folk is life steal you can't interact with. Um, as well as all of the removal and like Gangplank is never gonna hit because of Concussive Palm and Will of Ionia, so um, they can just like stabilize pretty well and then they're going to end the game before you have time to draw enough burn. Mm -hmm. And what do you reckon are the win conditions or the cards that you need to hit in order to win that matchup as well? Um, Misfortune for sure, because it's another Eye of the Dragon deck. Um, and like, there's two ways of playing. I've, like, I play against Ezreal Koma twice as a spec during the fight night, uh, and I played both. You either just, like, um, mulligan and try to hit a bunch of one drops and just, like, get under them, or um, you can play a bit slower and a bit more, like, for burn damage um, with, like, stuff like Zap Sprayfin and whatnot. Yeah, it makes total sense, especially because Zap Sprayfin most of the time is drawing you make it rain now that it's again a 2 mana and people start playing it, and most importantly, the fervor. And you can kind of play mind games with your opponent with those in mind. <laughs> but, we talked about your lineup, we have so, we have seen that you brought Azura Rele and uh, Pirate Agro, and we know Fight Night is a little bit unique, because you do not get the best, you just get two decks and you need a nice matchup spread. So, which matchups did you want to target with the lineup overall? <laughs> uh, yeah, so... Anything that was slow and not ending the game, and like GP Sidwani, um, that kind of stuff, really. And did you face any decks that gave you some troubles? Any Some decks that you did not expect? Um, not really. Things kind of went as planned. So nothing really surprising, you just face the matchups that you want and then you won because of it. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Since everything is set and done, you won the tournament and the season is approaching. So do you think these two decks that you brought to Fight Night are, are viable for a seasonal lineup? At least two out of the three decks could be these? Um, so... The reason I ended up bringing this lineup to Fight Night actually was because I realized um, the aggro lineup for three deck one ban is like almost good, but it doesn't have a good third deck. Um, but for Fight Night, you can just not play a third deck. So, like, the problem is, like, since both of these decks are trying to beat Gangplank Zidwani, um, there isn't actually a third aggressive deck that beats Gangplank Sejuani, so um, it's going to make your lineup kind of awkward in that regard. So I don't think I'll be bringing something like this to fight uh, Seasonals. Hmm. What would be your recommendation for people that want to play triple aggro into the Seasonal and still have a chance? You mentioned Gangplank Sejuani might be on the rise. Um, yeah, it's tricky. I think, like... You these you can probably still bring these um, just because they're like the strongest aggressive decks, and you just bring like a Jinx deck or like Elusives as your third, um, and just like focus less on like trying to beat Gangplank Sejuani. You might have to ban it sometimes, um, and just try to beat like lineups that aren't really prepared to where I grow. Mm hmm. And. Would a triple aggro lineup really, really be glad to see Sivir action, for example, or other Ionia Shurima piles? <laughs> um, 
Yeah, like, Sifu Akshan is, like, pretty even in the most aggro decks, so, like, you can, like, leave it up and do just fine. I think the main issue, and I think everyone agrees, is if they hit that Spirit's Refuge. If they hit the Spirit's Refuge, you're playing a different game. Yeah. Basically, but everything is said and done, again, you won the tournament. Did you get to prepare with someone for the tournament? Did you scream with someone? Because now is the time to shout them out. Yeah, so, um, before the tournament, I did some scrims with Oscillate and Dito. Um, they were my teammates, and they helped me out with a lot of things, so really happy to have them to help. I am glad to hear it. And we are actually at the end of the interview, and it's been a pleasure to have you around. And we have this one traditional question for all our interviewees. If you have one thing that you would like to say to the audience, only one thing, which one would that be? Um, I love the play pattern of the UI, really. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love it. I simply love it. Thank you for the interview, Floppy. It's been a pleasure to have you and end it on a high note. So, ladies and gentlemen, this was the interview for last week's Fight Night NA, and there's definitely more to come. So, stay tuned. See you next time.